Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from exitautomation.com and welcome to part 5 of our API testing with REST Sharp and SpecFlow course. And in this video I'll be talking about performing POST operation with REST Sharp. Alright, so let's get started. POST with body parameters. So we are going to perform POST operation with some of the body parameter with our fake JSON server. So as you can see here, for the POST of the profile, we have something called as a anonymous class here by adding a body with new of name is equal to Sam. So if I pass this new of name is equal to Sam for the post ID of one, then it is going to create a profile matching with that particular post ID. So it's going to link that particular value in there. So the whole concept here is very, very simple. We are going to be passing or performing a post operation with an anonymous class as you can see in here. So that's very very simple here as opposed to rest assured that we discuss in our other course in our YouTube where in rest assured you need to pass the JSON object and JSON array and within the JSON array you need to create all the key value pairs and then you need to add that key value pairs into the JSON object so that you can then pass within that particular rest assured as a parameter or the body parameter which is kind of very very painful but in C sharp it is very very straightforward and simple as you can see it looks like a JSON representation and that's it that's going to be the body for the request that you're going to make. Again, don't worry about me comparing with REST Assured sometimes with REST Sharp because both of these courses are dealing with REST. That's why I'm comparing both of them in here. So the next operation that we're going to do is with POST with body parameter with type class. So as you can see in here, I have created a new model called POSTS and within this particular model, I have three properties like ID, author and title. So I'm just going to be passing these particular value like ID, author and title and then I'm going to be performing a POST operation for one of the POST operations request within our fake JSON server so that it's going to create a new POST for me. So you can see that this is also really cool because you have a strongly typed class as opposed to the anonymous class that we used earlier in here that you can still pass the property something like this and this is going to be the input for the server that you have got. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to Visual Studio IDE. So alright so this is the same project that we were discussing earlier in our video and today we'll be writing a post operation. So for the post operation as I said we have two post operation here. One post operation is with the anonymous class and another post operation is with without anonymous class which is going to be of type class. So let's take one by one and then we'll talk about it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the anonymous class thing. So for the anonymous class the version that I'm be using is with the postman that you as you can see in here. I'm going to go all the way here to the postman. And you can see this is the profile post that I'm talking about. So it says post of two for the profile and the body with the name is Sam. So if I send this, you can see that it is going to return as name is equal to Sam and post ID is equal to two, right? So this is actually running within our server as you can see in here, right? So this is the actual working functionality. So here we are passing the path parameter and then the body parameter for our operation that we've been performing in here. So for doing that, I'm going to write one more test method this time. And I'm going to call this test method maybe as post with anonymous class. And within this post with anonymous body method, I'm going to be, let's say I'm going to decorate this as a test. And then I'm just going to copy paste some of the codes from here to reduce some time that we're going to be spending in. And then for this particular URL, I'll be passing the profile as you saw in the demo and the method is going to be method.post in here so it's actually a post operation that we'll be performing in right and then as I said we need to add the body in here so for the body I'm going to do this I'm going to be calling the request dot add body and you can see that there is a method called addBody and it expects us to pass an object here. So 
I'm just going to be creating an object as an anonymous class and I'll be just doing this Sam or maybe Raj why not and then I'll be then executing this particular code so for executing the code once again we can just call the execute method that we saw before and also we can perform the same operation that we saw earlier so maybe I can just copy this particular piece of code and I can paste it over here and let's uncomment this particular piece of code so it's basically going to return as the name as Sam or Raj so maybe we need to expect a name here and then we can assert the name with whatever value that we are expecting in so we're going to expect the result is equal to Raj right if not the author is not correct that's the value that we're going to be getting in back from the response as an assertion value right so let me try to build the solution and then I'm going to be just running the selector test to see what's really going to happen so let's see what's going to happen oops we got an error somewhere what is that it says that the name cannot begin with a small error character hexadecimal value so we can see what's really happening here so it has passed the oops it seems like it has, it has not even passed any value in there so the problem currently what's happening is while it's trying to execute this particular piece of code we are getting this particular error as you can see in here add the body so before executing we also need to make sure as you saw in the slide that we need to tell what kind of format that will be form passing in so the format here is actually json format so we have to tell it explicitly that the request that I'll be making in has a request format as data format dot JSON so if you don't really specify that then it is going to throw such kind of error in here as you can see so if I try to debug right now we can see the execution has come in here then I'll be debugging again and you can see that this time the execute has been successfully completed so I'm going to be deserializing it and let's see what's the output coming in so the output is Raj which is cool and you can see the server that it has executed successfully without any problem and now the assertions is going to happen which is has which has got passed as well and if I hit continue you can see the execution is successfully completed cool so as you can see even though you pass the anonymous type in here we have to explicitly specify that the request format that we're passing in is actually a data format of JSON if not the code is really not going to understand what data format that we are passing in and it's going to throw us an error right so that's why we need to pass in the data format in here right so this is how you can work with passing a post operation with an anonymous body and the next operation that we'll be performing in is with a strongly typed class so for that I'm going to create a future proof uh, folder here because we're going to use this a lot and I'm going to call this as model and within this model I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call this class as post and this particular class is going to hold all the post that you can see in here so if you go to the postman and let's see if I get a posts you can see for every post we have this ID title and author right so these are three things that it has for the responses so basically if you're going to create a new post we also have to perform the post operation for the post and then we need to pass these three values so that it's going to create a new post for me right so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class with all these three ID title and author right so which I can do something like this and let's mark this class as public right so if this is done I can then consume this particular class and start working with it so for doing that 
I'm going to be once again copying this particular piece of code and I'm going to paste it over here, post with type class body and instead of the new of name as Raj, something like that. And by the way, the post operation that I'm making in this time is not this guy. I'm actually going to make for the post. And again, you'll be wondering what is this particular post actually. If you have watched my rest assured course, I already discussed about it. If not, I can quickly show you how the post has to be created. So basically, as you can see in here for the post, we need to pass the body as you can see in here. So in our case, let's, let's assume that there is a, a ID called 15 and title is going to be rest sharp course and author is going to be Karthi KK. And if I perform a post with this URL and if I send it, you can see that it has created a new post for me and that's the response I'm getting in. And now if I perform a get operation for this particular post, so if you go here, see earlier we don't have an ID of 15. So now if I send it, you can see I have an ID of 15, which means the post has been uh, created with the rest sharp course, right? So this is exactly what I'm going to be doing in the code as well. So this is the post request with post. So this is the posts and the body that I'm adding in is going to be of new. I'm going to call this as posts. Hit control dot so that it's going to add a reference for the model. And then if I open here, close parenthesis, and you can see I get all the property here. So I'm going to say an ID as maybe 13 and an author is going to be execute automation maybe. And oops, this is actually string as well because I think that's what I gave. And finally, title, which is going to be rest sharp demo course, something like that. Right? So if everything is done, and then I will be executing this. And again, this particular add URL segment is not required because this is something which you don't, which you don't really require. So I'm just going to save this guy. And then I'm going to execute this. So basically the author that I'm expecting is execute automation this time, not Raj. So I'm going to copy paste this guy and let's try to build this particular solution. And now if I try to run this particular piece of code, you can see that it should be working fine without any problem. Uh, uh, no. So it's going to perform a post, but for some reason it is not actually returning us that value. Yeah, it's because it says the output of name. Actually, it's not output of name. It is actually output of uh, author, not name. So it's pretty much this guy that we discussed before. So this is the key that we should be looking for because this particular value has been created. I should change it to 14 because it should be unique. So I'm just going to run this time. Let's see what's going to happen. And there you go. The test has got passed, right? So you can see that the 14th ID of extra automation with this particular title would have created by now. So if I go back here to Postman and if I try to perform a get operation, you can see we have 14 as dress sharp demo course in here. Even the 13 has been created. Cool. So it seems like everything is working fine without any problem for the post operation with the body parameter with anonymous and non-anonymous class, right? In our next video, we'll see how to reduce this cluttering that we are seeing in here. As you can see that for every time for getting a value, we're actually doing so many things in here. So how to overcome the deserializing process in much efficient way and also how to work with an asynchronous way of getting this particular value instead of just using the synchronous way of getting this particular value. So we'll be talking about all these different jars in our next video and we'll understand how to even further enhance the way that we are executing this particular code and getting the response back.
So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.